Alright guys, this is my brand new plane, an F4U Corsair. And it is very, very pretty, at least according to the box. And let's look inside. The first thing that I notice with this plane is that it looks beautiful. The next thing that I noticed was that the foam is damaged a little bit, and I'll show you a little closer look at that right now. And when I say the foam, I mean the foam box that the plane came in. If you look close right there, you can see that that's cracked. I'll show you another spot with the same thing. Here's another spot. Same thing going on right here. Nice big gap there. Well, let's take out the parts and let's see if that impacted the plane at all. As I was doing the unboxing, taking the stuff out, I noticed that this wing is awesome. It's really thick. The paint on it's really nice actually. And there's a lot of a lot of structural soundness. You got the fiberglass right there. You got the big spots for the retracts, if and when I ever decide to do that. Uh, this is this is a really nice wing. I have to say that I'm quite impressed with it. So much so that I was even pretending like I was flying the plane with this wing. Yep, you can make fun of me. Leave those comments making me feel silly. I probably deserve it. On to the next pieces. Alright, so this next piece is the fuselage, of course. It's really pretty. I like the two-tone of the blue. And you can see under here so where the servos go, and somewhere in there is where I've got to mount the receiver. And I'm probably going to look in the book to see exactly where I should mount that. And I will show you what it looks like in there here shortly. Alright, so here is where the battery hatch is. And looks like you can adapt for any kind of battery that you want there within reason of course one thing that I don't like about my T28 probably one of the only things I don't like about my T28 is that there's no really adjustment for a different size battery once you kind of put it in there and it, the foam is eaten away stretched out whatever you want to call it innuendo put in there yes absolutely that's what I do. Uh, it's it's kind of, that is what it is. It do, you can't go back. You can't stick that genie back in the bottle. So I do like the idea of being able to go with fatter and thinner batteries and having them fit in there nice and secure. All right, now let's look at the other parts. Okay, so here is the horizontal stabilizer. This, much like the main wing, feels very solid and well reinforced. This makes me feel great about flying this plane. Even if I were to crash it on the Maiden, God, I hope I don't, but if I were to, I'm pretty sure it would be, it'd hold up well. Unless I really duff it, which is possible. Just ask my habu, although that wasn't on the Maiden. That was me trying to show off for my girlfriend. Uh, and it still flew afterwards, and it's not nearly as solid as this thing. So that, that makes me feel good. So we've also got the other key feature about this is it splits in two. This isn't just like the T28 horizontal stabilizer. It's... It detaches, it's more like the Wildcat, where you just put it together, stick on the tape, and you're good to go. 
Alright, so here are the two drop tanks, or tanks, I'm not exactly sure what they are, but they do add a little character to this plane. I'm not sure if I'm going to include them, to be honest, because it represents a bit of drag, but we'll see. We'll see how things turn out, and we'll go from there. Alright, that's it for this. Last but not least are the accessories. There's a landing gear, some connectors, screws, all sorts of stuff like that, and stickers for customization. For those folks who really get into that, I'm not really one of those folks. As long as it's clean looking and flies well, that's what gets me off. But I know there are plenty of you that like that, and I can appreciate that. I'm just a little too lazy for that. I just want to fly. Alright, so here's kind of an overview of the parts and pieces for this plane. And that kind of wraps that portion up of the unboxing. Next, I'm going to be showing you what this plane looks like when it's put together. Alright, so the build is done. Overall, I'd say it was a much harder build than I anticipated. And it can be evidenced by this, which is my fault, of course. I thought this was going to be a really quick 15-20 minute build. Turned out to be a little bit different. Part of it is because this is a plug and play plane. And the other part is because I had a really long week and was kind of stupid. And I set up the plane with power in a way that could cut through the paint with the prop as evidenced here. I did notice that this plane's paint comes off extremely easy. I accidentally put my pinky nail on it and the paint chipped away. So needless to say I'm going to have to get some touch-up paint here, probably in short order. But whatever, it's a plane. Still looks cool. And it should fly really well. Before I forget, I did momentarily have some drop tanks on underneath here. But as you can see, the little plastic thing that's supposed to hold it in is not there. It came undone. And needless to say, this is not looking as pretty as it could. And because I want to maiden this tomorrow, I am going to just do without on the maiden and see where it takes us. Up next is going to be the maiden flight, and after that, there'll be the review. Post flight review.
further off the grass. Although I had it trimmed out afterwards. All right, so this is my take on this plane after a couple takeoffs and a couple landings.